you differentiate yourself from all the other lawyers in the lawyer ghetto here in Beverly Hills in Century City. And you'll find that there aren't that many who don't go to court, but are available for really good lawyering and neutral uh, work. So what are your planning tools? And if you don't use these tools, you're essentially throwing money in the street. The first is a mission statement. How many of you have a mission statement for your mediation office? Ah, yes. For those of you in streaming land, I see no um, hands. How many of you have a vision statement of what you'd like to be? Glenn, could you talk to people about your vision statement? And he, he happens to be chair of the section. <laughs> It's about bringing people together in a collaborative effort to do problem solving rather than using litigation or contentious methods of problem solving and getting to a result. The, by doing a mission statement, you'll not only be um, reflecting on what's important to you by writing it in a consumer-friendly way. You are helping clients know what's important to you. And if it's important to you, there's a chance it'll be important to them as well. Then we just talked about your peacemaking signature of working that, that out. Um, if any of you do business work or family work, you know you can't get a loan from the Small Business Administration without a, without a business plan. They just won't even look at you. How many of you have written a business plan for your mediation work? In streaming land, it's zero. <laughs> now, I'm not going to promise you that you're going to make 400000 next year if you complete a business plan. But I will tell you that you will never get out of your litigation trap unless you do. And it will help you figure out the demographics, the services you're going to offer, your time, your time, timing, all the things that you can get from any business school um, uh, book on uh, business plans. So you say, so Woody, why are you talking about all this stuff? You must have gone to B school and really be a student of business. I'm not. I'm a mediator. And I don't like an empty table. I, I want people to be able to help. And I like it when they pay me. <laughs> and so the combination is such that I had to learn all these aspects of business and apply them as necessary. Um, and uh, frankly, every one of you, if you're going to be a, um, uh, a mediator, is going to be a pretty small little business. And it's got to it's, it's function that way. How many of you have a board of advisors? Personal board of advisors. In Streamland? There's zero hands up. Clearly, we needed to be together tonight. Um, one of the things that um, I started with early is I had a mentor who was president of this association. I'm looking for his, his uh, picture over there. It's Lewis M. Brown. He was president in 1963, I think. And I had, you all need a mentor. You, and if you don't have one, find one. And if you can't find one who will give you the time, pay for one. But a board of advisors is free. It, it, it is the people that care about you. And they will be there for you. Your job is to feed them, give them a good, good lunch or breakfast or dinner, and get them out in less than two hours. And their job is to give you honest feedback. And you have to give them the information, including your QuickBooks and all of your, all of your financial data and the important issues that you want them to help you with. One, <clears throat> do I give up litigation? Two, do I leave the firm, which I hate going to every day, so I open up an office to do what I want to do? Three, 
do I um, attempt to um, uh, volunteer at maybe 20 hours a week for the next year in order to build up my skills when that means I won't be able to um, uh, bring in the money, but hopefully it will pay off later. Four, do I take in a, a, a partner or maybe an interdisciplinary uh, person who can work in a, in a co-mediation model? For me, I needed one. Every time I wanted to write a book, it would cost me a lot of money because when I write a book for two or three months, I'm out of the office finishing it up. And I need some help to decide, should I take that time and do that. These are all things that a, a board of advisors can do for you. Now, these are my overall practice values. They don't have to be yours, but I want to go through them because I've thought about them for me for some time. Number one, I am an equal partner with my clients in everything. We decide what we're going to talk about. We decide how long to be able to stay on each subject. We decide where people are going to sit. It's a, it's a, it's a look, instead of the top down, as most professionals have it, sort of it's the cult of elitism, you become an equal partner with your client. Number two, informed consent and choice is the bedrock of everything our clients do. It isn't just that they need informed choice based on the new statute that, we, um, that uh, you have to uh, give if you're a lawyer in mediation, which I'm going to talk about uh, soon. Um, it is informed choice about every aspect of the deal, of who's going to be sitting at the table, of how, how long they're going to stay in mediation or pull the plug, these are big choices, and the clients need to make them. Next value. I happen to believe that court is not just unpleasant. It kills and maims people. It hurts people. It is a health hazard. And so I have a mantra in my office. Every day out of court, is another day out of court. <laughs> and everything that we can do to build up the number of barriers for people going to court are going to help people and help them in ways that they never, ever imagined. Do any of you, if you have a client who really thinks that uh, the, the judge is going to, or jury is going to go her way, Suggest that they do a courthouse field trip, pack a lunch, and go down to the courthouse and have that client take a look at how much time that judge has, who that judge is, and how the people are being treated. It's a, it is a great way to get your clients into mediation. <laughs> I happen to believe that interest-based negotiation, which you all have been trained in, should be the first and last step along the dispute resolution highway. Sometimes people go to mediation and they say, oh, well, we'll see how we're going to do and, and to get some free discovery and move on to the next part of the litigation. Um, I like to get a commitment that this is it. Unpack your suitcase. We're not leaving here until we get a deal. This is your last stop. And that belief that it's going to be the last stop rather than the next stop often will get people to settle. 